Freedom Forum 2 on the illustrious day of 5-11-2016. Let's say a short prayer for our country. Lord, we ask you to intervene, but we also have to ask you, we also have to look to you to intervene in our country. We know that we've sent you away and a lot of people have taken you out of a lot of our stuff. We even made a comment on our way down in Baton Rouge with the three crosses and we're amazed that no one has made them take them down. And we need to fight that. We need to look to you for our strength. We need to look for you to change our country back to you and put you in our lives daily. In your name we pray, amen. amen. I uh, just wanted, uh, I get asked all the time about the flag being upside down. And that is what, from way back when? That is an international distress signal from very far back in the military. You'd run the flag up upside down and it could be seen for a distance. What I do want to go over, and it's so important tomorrow night, the Acadiana Patriots monthly meeting on May 12th, which is tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. at the Robichaux Recreation Center in 1919 U.S. Landy Road, Lafayette. We're going to have Brett Guyman, candidate for the third congressional district seat, will be speaking about his campaign and will answer questions. Also, we will have a PowerPoint presentation on, by Jim Phelps from 2717 Ministries on refugee resettlement in Louisiana. And y'all need to really learn about this and the national security threat that it brings. We would like to get some pastors, priests, and legislators to attend as well. See what you can do. We will have some updates on uh, legislative bills and also on the Pledge of Allegiance at the school board, of which I've heard nothing or seen nothing in the newspaper recently. Come join us for a very informative meeting, God bless. And with all the stuff that's taken place with the governor and all his deal and the ethics stuff, I mean, I, I want to put a shout out to Jeff Landry. Uh, I, I think Jeff campaigned on the fact that he was going to clean things up. He has. Oh, he's he, been working he's on it. He's done a heck of a job. So we you need saw what to, he did with the, uh, the uh, Lafayette Parish District Attorney's Office. After the FBI got finished, he came in there and he made five, six, seven more uh, sets of, of indictments of people. Plus it got he, interesting cleaned up a lot of things within mm -hmm. the own office. Oh yeah. Over yeah. there, plus in a battle with, something we didn't talk about was the sanctuary cities, mm -hmm. and Jeff is in a big battle with the governor over that. That's another thing that the governor doesn't like, that they're making a law. Valerie Hodges, good friend of mine, is <clears throat> made, has a bill for the sanctuary cities and Jeff is backing her up. Actually, he testified with Valerie at the committee meeting and it got through committee. And the governor don't like it. He's got questions about it. Yeah, because it's a that, democratic cause. Yeah, well, let's understand that who who is the leader, supposed leader of our country? Mm. What is his deal? Mm. Bring the refugees in here. <clears throat> Build my army. <laughs> Destroy America. That is true. By saying that, does that get me in trouble? Sort of. Mm. <laughs> I don't care. I'm an Moves American. you higher up the list. You, you know what? I'm an American. I speak English, and I don't need a press, too. <laughs> By the way, I saw something interesting today that there's an article that the New York school systems have 120 languages spoken this is ridiculous you are in america you want to come to america the english language is the standard language of america if you don't want to speak english then go swim back across the river or the ocean or whatever it is you came by i just got a message from patty 
The school board will vote on the pledge on June 1st at 5.30. Might want to be there, huh? June 1st. Let's see when that is. What are they voting on? Well, no. To stand or not to stand? Yeah, June, uh, June the 1st looks like it would be a Wednesday. It is, which would make it very difficult. <laughs> yes, at 5.30, yes, it would be difficult. To be there. Yes, it would be difficult. <laughs> I'm going to text her back. To stand or not to stand? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, one of the articles that I, that I had pulled that I read that was very interesting that explains a lot. Has everybody been watching the news coverage and the uh, endorsements by Mark Levin oh. of Cruz? And how uh, Mr. Cruz was being backed by, by Glenn Beck and others. Well, it just so happens that Ted Cruz's political pack paid $8 million, spread it around Mark Levin, spread it around Glenn Beck and others to endorse him publicly in their various radio programs. So for those of you who were Cruz fans who didn't believe that Cruz could do things like this, on top of the fact that Cruz's campaign was paid for by Goldman Sachs, who, oh, also paid for Hillary's campaign, and Ted Cruz's wife happens to be a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, which is trying to bring in the UN and world domination over us. One world. One world government. And Mrs. Cruz is also dun, 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 Vice President at Goldman Sachs. Oh, the right. big banks that are in the middle of the tarp bailouts and all of the foolishness. Yeah, so how can you all tell you that oh, Trump had dealings with with them also? Yeah, but he got his own money. Yeah. Now here Patty, goes. Patty sent me an answer. I said to stand or not to stand. Oh, yes. And she said to stand. Wait, are we talking about the pledge or the North Carolina bathroom issue? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, that could be either or. To no, stand or not to stand, that is the question. Patty's talking about the Yes, uh, I know. <laughs> now, our, our in the stand, field. Whether they should have, our, they're going to um, stand. Our in the field. That, uh, that's a Supreme Court ruling in 1942. That they had to stand, but they don't have to recite it. Well, next on the the, the agenda, uh, our in the field reporter, Mr. Brock, has sent me a, a note that uh, there is a suspicious suicide of a political blogger who exposed the Cruz JFK connection, and who brought out the photo of the gay Marco Rubio bubble bath party that he had in college, where they were all in the tub blowing bubbles together. Oh yes, oh yes. He's dead by suspicious circumstances. Oh my God. How do you like that? How do you like that? Here's another good one he just sent me, and I, I read this today. Vincente Fox, the former uh, El Jefe of Mexico, warns that if Trump becomes president, uh, we will have war. Please bring it on. Please. Who's he going to send? Everybody can run, jump, or swim is already here. Yeah. Who's he going to send? You know? Yeah. Ain't got nobody to send. I was seeing how much it costs to ship 2,000 alligators to the border. <laughs> you know, they had, they caught a 20-foot saltwater crocodile in the Rio Grande, and they cut it open, and it had a dead Mexican in it. Is that right? Yeah. My thing was, why'd they kill it? They should have just tagged it. On the, on, on the skin with a, a U.S. Border Patrol logo and let that big 20-foot super, super crime-fighting machine patrol and eat and, and be merry. And I guarantee you, we should have let that sucker breathe. We could have had effective enforcement. I said we ought to make it just like a moat. Now, here is one <laughs> that, got, that really got my goat. Paul Ryan says that the U.S. must admit Muslim migrants but then sends his kids to private schools that screen them out. Mm. Can y'all believe this? After the Paris attacks, that no good Yankee, Paul Ryan, declared that the United States cannot turn away the thousands of Islamist migrants who approved 
for visas to enter the U.S. He would say it would not be appropriate to consider the religious attitude. Hmm. Interesting. Funny, he sends his children to a Catholic school that is connected to a parish where he was an altar boy as a child. Now, Breitbart reached out to the school as a prospective applicant to see what would happen and obtained a copy of the 2015-2016 religious registration papers and tuition contract. The document inquires into the applicant's religious background, in particular, ask if you are a parishioner at the Associated Catholic Parish. The school recruits through the parish by offering a tuition discount to those who have been baptized and are members of the parish. Now, what qualifies as a parishioner? Uh, you must be officially registered at that Catholic parish. Your child must have been baptized, fulfill Sunday Mass and other holy days of obligation, offer consistent financial support uh, through the church, offertory envelopes, or a direct deposit per a minimum $800 per calendar year. Volunteer services at the parish and participates in the ministries. Now, boy, boy, boy. Let's see. Uh, the cost to educate a child at that school is $4,000 per year. Let's see. It just gets better and better and better. So now we know why Mr. Paul Ryan is such a big hypocrite. Did you ever see the pictures of his home? Uh-huh. The one with the big fence up front? The big fence up front, like yeah. a fortification. Yeah, he don't want a fence down south. And his kids go to private schools. Well, that's the private vet, school we're talking about. Which vet the Muslims out. And here was something interesting that I just, this just struck me. <laughs> Perfectly. It makes me print all this stuff, so yeah. then I gotta read it. Gun grabbers <laughs> put in their place by Sigmund Freud. <laughs> Folks, I'm gonna put this out there with no sugar on it. A fear of weapons is a sign of retarded sexual and emotional <laughs> maturity by Sigmund Freud. So for you <laughs> lefties, panty waist, I can't own a gun, I'm afraid it makes me pee in my pants. Well, we know that you're a little retarded and a little emotionally uh, lacking, you know. We might have lost some. You know, that's why Hillary is so anti-gun, because Bill is retarded sexually and he has a retarded emotional maturity. Really? It's what the women say. <laughs> Jennifer Flowers and Paula Jones have said. We have to keep it clean. I, that is clean. We just said I, that's what I they missed, said. I messed up in the first We word. just said he was retarded. We didn't say how. Uh, and uh, Fortunately, you said retarded. <laughs> yeah. They said he's retarded. And uh, it just gets, gets better and better right here. Uh, the gun-free zones. Folks, oh, speaking of gun-free zones, I saw something interesting. We have to add another victim to oh, yes. our gun boycott yes. Yes. list. And they're hiding it. The Cracker Barrel store is a gun-free zone for all but law enforcement. A gentleman out of state was going to a Cracker Barrel and was an open carry, and that state is an open carry state. And he was approached and asked to leave. And when he left, the Cracker Barrel people put a sign up in the window that they do not allow the possession of any firearms in that restaurant except by law enforcement. So again, we have uh, Cracker Barrel, wow. we have Carabas, we have Buffalo Wild Wings, we have Whole Foods. Of course, we're boycotting Target. And the two big uh, Lafayette movie grand cinemas are all gun-free zones because folks... Carabas? Yes. Yes. Oops. They're gun-free too. Oops. And the reason why we're doing this is because these are liberal Democrat hunting preserves. Democrats only want criminals to be able to have guns in these places, not the honest folks. So 
That is why I do not go to any of these establishments. If I am disarmed and defanged, I am no longer a citizen. I am a subject, and I don't go anywhere where I am a subject. That is according to Colonel Jeff Cooper, who was the dean of modern close combat pistol craft. If you are armed, you are a citizen. If you are disarmed, you are a subject on your knees. And therefore, we need to support places that allow us to carry. And the two big grand cinemas, one of which had an active shooter situation last year, is a gun-free zone. And in case you idiot liberal Democrats have not pulled your uh, craniums out of your rectums and reversed that process, that is where criminals go to hunt. That's where they need to go to movies. Yes. Yes, you liberals, we advise y'all to eat and go to movies in all gun-free zones. That way, when the bad people come, they're getting you. Carabas. Oh, yes. I was just there Sunday. Oh, yes. Uh, he reminded me. A teacher in Australia is being uh, prosecuted for calling Mohammed a child molester. Mohammed is not only a child molester, but a goat raper, a murderer, and a pillager. He is all of these things. Never met a goat he didn't like. <laughs> hey, we didn't hear from a I know. goat herder tonight. Is our Here's phone another working? good one. Uh, our phone is on. I, I checked it. Our out-of-studio reporter says that Roger Stone is reporting that Paul Ryan and Rents Priebus are planning to extort Trump at the RNC. The GOP establishment is still scheming to steal the nomination. By the way, the head of the, the Republicans, Rents Priebus, doesn't that sound like a Caribbean version of the, the VD, an STD? You got the Rents Priebus. You need to go take some antibiotics. Doesn't, I mean, doesn't it sound like that? Oh my God! I got the wrench previous crawling up my leg. You know? He looks like a I don't know you. I mean, I, just food for thought. You know, it was just amazing. But you know, this stuff about they, being they actually had Common Core history. So. But the thing is, being prosecuted for saying negative stuff about Islam, I can remember an art exhibit where they had a a, a Christian cross stuck in a bottle of urine. Now, why is it that everyone can do anything and everything to the Christian faith, to Christians, or anyone who professes uh, Christianity, but yet these Muslims get special treatment? Are they violating the true Establishment Clause, Jim, where the United States government cannot create a state religion? Because, okay, Dearborn, Michigan has no-go zones for whites and Christians. Can't go there. So is that, is that, in effect, violating the Constitution? I think somebody needs to file a suit on that one. Because if we can't allow Christian prayer in school, there's Goat Man. Yeah, we woke him up. Where you been, Goat Man? We were just talking about I was you. cleaning my 17, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hey, what you doing Friday? Friday? Uh, whatever I'm doing, I can change plans because I'm kind of flexible. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get with you. Uh, we need to go out and uh, and see how see how that 17 flies. Yeah, yeah, I need to go do some more shooting there. Need to, yeah. Might maybe have a little lunch over there and uh, go out and hit the range. You know? Yeah, that's cool. That'll work. Just give me a holler. I'm gonna give you a yeah. call. Hey, you coming to y'all coming to uh, y'all coming to Jim's meeting tomorrow night? Oh yeah, we don't. We don't All right, we're gonna we're gonna hash it out at the meeting. One. I, I I ain't missed one since I met him. Okay, well we'll we'll talk more about it then. Yeah, uh, yeah, cause uh, you know it's a, it's it's not a smart gun. I ain't I I don't want nothing smarter than me. But at least I I don't have that. Well, we're not gonna going comment on, on, you know, on that. I got, I got a gun. <laughs> Well, this is all another Obama ploy to try to institute some gun control because people don't understand. The smart gun thing sounds like a good idea until the government can turn the darn thing off and nobody can use it. That's smart.
smart thing. That ain't, that, that ain't good for nothing. Oh, they like that. That's kind of like when they put computers in a diesel truck. Well, you know, <laughs> you know. What can you we say? Know where you are. Big Brother's watching. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, he can watch me all he wants. He could have come out here and helped me the day when I was shoveling with that number two drag line. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I will see you all tomorrow night, man. We will all catch right, you again. Later. Later. <laughs> we actually have a victory. Your friend and mine, Sheriff Joe, America's Sheriff has defied people don't realize this guy's in his 80s mm -hmm. he has defied obama again and has <laughs> had a court remove obama's ban on workplace raids so he will go into the workplace in the phoenix area and remove those illegal farmo, farmer former uh, taco bell employees who got loose on the work visas and are running amok and incarcerate them in pink underwear and make them eat bologna sandwiches in the heat and watch the religious channel. That is really terrible that he treats him like that. Yeah. Sheriff Joe went after him because he says, uh, he says here, I mean, he says our, it was a... Our prisoners uh, have colored TV and cable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Three-judge panel. And believe it or not, from the Ninth Circus... Court of Appeals. Circus. <laughs> the circus, yeah. These were all Bill Clinton appointees. They backed him. Amazing. Wow. We are now in the end times, folks. We are in revelations. Dogs will lay with cats. Right will be wrong. Cows will be fly. Flying over us is just... I, I, we were talking about Jeff Landry a while ago. Yeah. This is our, this is our leader. Jeff, we love you. Louisiana Attorney General, Republican establishment is living in a bubble. <laughs> well, if you can call cranial rectal inversion a bubble. Whatever. <laughs> Louisiana Republican, Republican Attorney General Jeff Landry slammed the D.C. political class, pushing mass immigration and stalling grassroots conservatives' efforts to end dangerous practices such as funding sanctuary cities on Breitbart's <clears throat> daily news Friday morning. Landry, who is spearheading the effort in Louisiana to cut off funding for building projects and to allow victims of illegal alien crime to sue municipalities shielding aliens, told Sirius XM host... Excellent. ...ex host Stephen Bannon, sanctuary cities were un-American. They are. Jeffrey. <laughs> Go Jeff Landry. They increase crime in every mis municipality, and we got that from mm -hmm. when we talked to our buddy, in which the police policy is in place. And what it does, it takes valuable law enforcement tools away from our law enforcement officers. It endangers citizens. Oh. It doesn't do anything for our, our help for fighting global terrorism. Because what happens is the police are prohibited from cooperating with the feds. Ask Kate Steinle's dad about sanctuary cities. She'd and, still and be alive know, today. But San Francisco expanded their right, sanctuary right. city thing even after the Kate Steinle thing. She'd still be alive if that yo-yo wasn't allowed to come back or if they'd incarcerated him. Five times? Or, oh, yeah. That's oh, not yeah. only un-American, it's unlawful. He also... He said also pointing to the murder of, and you just said it, San Francisco's Kate Steinle at the hands of an illegal alien deported five times with dozens of arrests. She'd be alive today if he wouldn't have been allowed back in. We need a wall, folks. Mm -hmm. The wall in Israel works. Speaker John Boehner and current Speaker Paul Ryan for ignoring the threats posed to Americans by out-of-control illegal immigration. My statement I've already I've made many times on Facebook and in emails. <clears throat> what part of illegal do they not understand? Jim, I have a cure for this. I have a cure. Uh oh. What we're gonna do is I we're know going. What your cures are. We're gonna get school vouchers for illegal Syrians to go to school with Paul Ryan's little children, 
And what we're going to do is they're going to have to make an exception for those little Muslim jihadis or it's discrimination. It is discrimination. And Paul Ryan's little jewels will go to school with those little Muslim goat rapers and let's see how they like it after that. But see, that, that's just like Obamacare. It's okay for us, but not them. That's how the whole deal works. They end up living in a bubble and not understanding the practicality of what everyday yeah, citizens call it the have beltway. to go through. The they don't bubble. have to put their edicts into practice. And that's the problem. Well, of course. Landry said, look, I've complained about Boehner's inability to govern and basically pigeonhole the Obama administration time after time instead of making progress and moving forward. We're constantly stepping back. And everything that they're complaining about today is based on policies that they implemented. I ended up out of Congress. This is very interesting. I ended up out of Congress. I enjoyed my time there and got, and got a lot of great people still out there. A lot of patriots standing up for us in Congress. He continued, but you know what? Now I ended up as the Attorney General for the state of Louisiana. Awesome. And we're going to take the same conservative principles I had when I was in Congress, and we're going to implement them in the state of Louisiana. Praise the Lord. Pass the ammunition. House leadership ousted Landry in 2012 after his district was broken into three parts purposely. Well, of course, and we got Bustani. <laughs> Undeterred, he launched a successful run for attorney general. Attorney generals are our last defense against government overreach. Landry has previously said on Breitbart News. You want to know what? I, I heard, you know, New Iberia. I talked to people in New Iberia about Jeff. Oh, oh, Jeff did this and Jeff did that. You know what? Jeff, I give Jeff a lot of credit. He came to our meeting when he was running against Bustani. And he stood up there and explained to us, the first person ever that I know sat it, stood in our meeting and explained to us what actually goes on in Washington, D.C. With the big money. And, and how if you don't play the game, you're out. And he said he was told directly that he will never serve another term. Go ahead. Hello? Hello. Brad, this is Austin. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, tell Jim along that deal with uh, what they're doing, them reports, and them children in school, they also sending them home as part of their homework to get a report on their parents. Oh, yeah. To see what they do in their yeah. homes. Yeah. And, um... Uh, Hillary uh, Nutsack Clinton is uh, not from Arkansas. She's from Rotterdam, Holland. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> well, sure. And them goats, you put their back legs in some rubber boots and uh, push them by the water trough and uh, <laughs> they won't run. <laughs> <laughs> and they're running around all over the yard over, over there hollering, Daddy! <laughs> That's what they say at Obama's house. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, we appreciate y'all. Y'all have a good one. Catch Thank you later, you, Austin. <laughs> That's the fellow at my meeting that, that sits to the right of me. Yeah, yeah, the welder. Yeah, He's a I welder. Who that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That That's, was awesome. Moving we on. We didn't say that. <laughs> Moving on to less deep subjects. Oh, man. Uh, Brother Obama, his last act is going to force <laughs> suburbs to be less white and less wealthy. Hillary's rumored running mate, housing secretary, Julian Castro, here with the anointed messiah of the minority species, is cooking up a scheme to give money for Section 8 housing to punish, and that's the words in this article, suburbs for being too white and too wealthy. Let that sink in, folks. Y'all are too white and you're too wealthy. Jeez. Brother Obama's going to import some Section 8 people to fix y'all. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, we got the scheme, in our neighborhood now, already. get this. The scheme involves our tax money mm -hmm. being spent with a super-sized vouchers to help urban poor afford the higher rents in pricey areas such as Westchester County while assigning them government real estate agents called mobility no. counselors to secure housing in those areas. Castro will launch the Section 8 reboot this fall. Thank God Obama doesn't have much time. And even though a similar program was tested years ago in Dallas, it has been uh, blamed for shifting violent crime into affluent neighborhoods. So the very fact that you move to a nice neighborhood to get away from the yo-yos, they bring in the yo-yos to you. Oh. It is all a part of a grand scheme to forcibly desegregate inner cities and integrate the outer suburbs. My. Castro last month threatened to sue suburban landlords for discrimination if they refused even Section 8 tenants with criminal records. Now, I know for a fact in New Iberia over there, they run background checks over there on you especially up on the hill. And uh, the landlord over there has, has put in infrared night vision cameras that are recording on a DVD. And let me tell you, I can personally vouch for the fact he cleaned that place up because he got the yo-yos out of there. He run you and you got criminal record, you ain't living there. And it, last year, Mr. Castro implemented a powerful new regulation called the Affirmatively Furthering Fair Housing that pressures all suburban counties that take federal money to change local zoning laws to build more low-income housing and landlords of all properties are required to accept that. He is also expected to finalize the small area fair market rent this October. It will set a voucher limit for rent by zip code rather than a metro area. So, for example, the fair market rent for a one-bedroom apartment in New York City is about $12.50 a month, but it wouldn't cover a rental in the nice areas of Westchester County, such as... I worked in Westchester. I know uh, what that area is all about. Mamaroneck, where Castro and his social engineers will resettle Section 8 tenants. And the expensive zip codes, Castro's plan, and here's the rub, no congressional approval required would more than double the standard subsidy also covering utilities. So at the same time, he will reduce the subsidies for those who stay in the poor areas, such as Brooklyn's. So the Section 8 tenants won't just be pulled to the suburbs, they're going to be forced there. You have to move to the rich people's spot or you don't get as much money. So he says we will use These our housing choice vouchers to ensure... This is going to be immigrants too? Could be. Mainly it's going to be minority to ensure that we don't have a concentration of poverty and the aggregation of racial minorities in one part of town, the poor part of town. So what you're telling me is, is because you worked and got educated, you're going to be penalized. Good job, you're going to be penalized. Yep. Yep. And by the way, Bill Clinton started a program in 94 called Moving to Opportunity Initiative which moved thousands of mostly African-American families from government projects to higher quality homes in safer, less racially segregated neighborhoods in several counties. Uh, the 15-year experiment bombed. A 2011 study sponsored by HUD found that adults using more generous Section 8 vouchers did not get better jobs or get off welfare. And in fact, more went on food stamps and their children did not do better in their schools. Worse, Crime simply followed them to safer neighborhoods, ruining the quality of life for existing residents. Males were arrested more often than those in the control group primarily for property crimes. Dubuque, Iowa received an influx of voucher holders from projects in Chicago and has had a crime problem ever since. It was related directly to the Section 8 housing. And of course, even when reality mugs the leftists, they never scrap their social theories. They just double down. And they also tested this theory in Dallas. Guess what? Didn't work there neither. So folks, Obama and his liberals 
This is what happens when we say elections have consequences. Mm -hmm. Dumbbell Edwards pushing all of this crazy stuff that Jim has talked about. Obama pushing this crazy stuff. Yeah, wait do, you, wait do I read this? This is why <laughs> elections have consequences. And you liberals, you're responsible for all the damage that Obama's done the last seven and a half years. All of the jihadi stuff. All of the stuff that Obama's been doing on his apology tour. Oh, and Obama's getting ready to go to Japan on his apology he's tour. Gonna, no, he's not going to apologize. The very fact he is there is an inappropriate presence that shows apology. And veterans are up in arms. Well, let me tell you some factors here. Number one, a lot of people don't realize the Japanese raped the town of Nanking, China. They have film and they have stills of Japanese soldiers using citizens for sword and bayonet practice just for fun. Really? And, and... The Japanese had their own biological chemical warfare experimentation unit called Unit 731. And the reason that you don't hear about all of this is because all of the media wants to focus on the Nazis, where the Japanese did just as bad or worse. And here's the rub. These scientists under Operation Paperclip were giving amnesty and moved to the U.S. to teach us their secrets. Wow. Yes. And folks... We did not just go hit Hiroshima and Nagasaki by accident. A little thing called Pearl Harbor hit. Thousands of our sailors were slaughtered by the Japanese. The Japanese had been killing their way across China and the South Pacific. And it took the United States to step in and do something. It took us to drop an atomic bomb on the little nippers. And it took the second atomic bomb to convince them of the error of their ways. Because they still weren't convinced. You know, we already have a line of people that don't like us. Nippers. And now you said nippers. Well, when somebody kills 3,500 of my fellow countrymen and sailors. Yeah, I got They you. called them worse than that in, 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 in the day. I, I know, I know, but, but don't, don't, don't say that. <laughs> Well, let me tell you what. These, these, these people attacked us, and it took a little while for the sleeping dragon of the United States to finally wake up. Once we woke up, Come though... <laughs> and Roosevelt knew it was coming. Yes, that's something else that was interesting. Folks, Roosevelt knew the attack on Pearl Harbor was coming and purposely let it happen. We had broken the Japanese code many months before, and he did this because the public sentiment in the U.S., we did not want to be in World War II on either front. And Roosevelt, being the good liberal Democrat communist he is, saw dollar signs from the war effort. Kind of like Iraq, huh? Yep. And he <laughs> then allowed this to happen and sacrificed over 3,500 sailors on the altar of political expediency and to get the dollars. Yes, Tom? Cousin. And Churchill stayed after Franklin Roosevelt to get us in the war. Oh, he made several trips over here begging for us to get in the war. Yeah. Wow. If it wasn't for us, the British would be eating schnitzel right now. <laughs> you know we had to loan them a bunch of guns because you know the Brits are, are, uh, are still up to their gun control foolishness and didn't learn their lesson. You know when the war on the Falklands came? They had to empty several museums of weapons to be able to arm yeah, we troops. Were talking about that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Really? Yes. They barely had enough guns to send people to the Falklands. Right now, the, the British as a country cannot project air or sea power the way they, they did in the Falklands War in the 1980s. They cannot. They cannot. I want to change the subject. Far away? You know, there's a lot of talk about the gay stuff. No. And our president is gay. Let me read this. We knew he was a goat man, but Lord. <laughs> Franklin, <laughs> Franklin Graham bashes Obama's monument to sin. Can't believe how far. 
as President Barack Obama and the White House prepare, I don't know how many people know this, but this is a fact, prepare to unveil the first gay rights monument in New York City. Preacher and evangelist Franklin Graham is lashing out against it. The first ever monument commemorating the gay rights struggle will be on display in the middle of Greenwich Village in New York as early as next month. I don't know when this was the Washington Post, but not everyone is happy about that prospect. I can't understand. Reverend Grayman commented on the historic monument, calling it a monument to sin. In Facebook pro post, Graham was very outspoken about why he thinks the gay rights monument should not even exist. He nominated war heroes, founders of the nations, and other groundbreaking leaders to receive monuments instead of what President Barack Obama has proposed. War heroes deserve a monument. Our nation's founding fathers deserve a monument. People who have helped to make America strong deserve a monument. But a monument to sin? Graham questions. Referencing the New York area and the gay rights monument, he continued, it's no surprise that the three officials you'll love this, who represent the area and support the monument are <clears throat> all openly gay. I can't believe how far our country has digressed. I hope that the president will reconsider. Graham does not believe that the monument is a bad idea, but he also assert, asserted that to erect such a monument would be to celebrate sin. Now, I know reading this, I'm going to catch some flack somewhere, mm. but flaunting sin is a dangerous movie said. God's words tell us, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. There's a couple of places that were mentioned in the Bible, I believe were called Sodom and Gomorrah, mm -hmm. and they yeah. kind of disappeared quick. Yeah, and you know, it's, I, I wanted to tell people, uh, you can write this down, uh, gender ideology harms children. Okay, a friend of mine on Facebook sent me this. And, it, and you can look it up under the American College of Pediatricians. So you can't, you can't judge children by the plumbing. They get to choose. Yeah, it's, right. It's a very good article. It uh, goes through it. goes through about, I don't know how many different things. But this all happened because she made a comment that earlier article. I put that out. And she said that those people were good people. <laughs> those people? And, and I went back, the, uh, t t it's close to this. What was that article I had? The questionnaire. Mm. Oh, the questionnaire people are good people? Really? No, well, she, what happened was she made a mistake. She, she wrote in the American Academy of Okay, tell, tell the people who she is. I don't know her name. No, but explain what you're talking about. Well, it, what it was is something on Facebook. Yeah, that we give them a context. Back, we were going back and forth, and, and I told her, <coughs> I made a comment about this, or she made a comment about the American Academy of Pediatrics and, and the gender ideology thing harms children. And I'm going like, whoa, wait a minute. I just read this article. Well, what it was, she used to be a pediatrician nurse, okay, which I found out later. And what the fact was is she meant to say the American College of Pediatricians instead of the American Academy of Pediatricians. And so I corrected, I helped her correct her mistake, and then I got this article. And then... She got a copy of this, <laughs> and she came back. Her comment was that if I'd still be in that process, there is no way that the doctor would ever get to ask any children these questions. You see, this is not the school that's doing this. It's the doctor. Mm. Who's getting a kickback. Obviously, somebody's oh, got money yeah, changing yeah, hands. There's, there's money. There's mm. money. But... So, it, but that gender ideology harms children, it's a very interesting article, very enlightening. But that's with the American College of Pediatricians. 
Just look it up. You'll find the article. Now, here was a disturbing article that I that I uh, I came across, and it's pretty uh, applicable to everybody. Uh, two New, Jer New Jersey state troopers arrested a woman for remaining silent during the traffic stop. Now, you can go to this citizen's rule book and read the Fifth Amendment. You basically have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. If you cannot afford an attorney, an attorney will be provided for you. That part about the right to remain silent. Well, two New Jersey state troopers cuffed a woman on a Warren County highway and hauled her in on obstruction charges because she refused to answer questions during a routine traffic stop, according to the dash cam. On October 16th, this happened near the New Jersey-Pennsylvania border on Route 519, and there is a federal civil rights lawsuit filed by the victim, Rebecca Mascara, who happens to be an attorney from Philadelphia. Oh, grasshopper, we're getting deep here. Musafer claims that the suit involves the troopers vi violating basic rules that anybody who's ever watched a police show can quote. Three troopers insisted during the ordeal that her refusal to answer questions was a criminal act. The spokesman for the state police and the AG's office representing the troopers have declined to comment. State police spokesman Captain Stephen Jones said in an email, in every evidence instance, excuse me, where misconduct is alleged against a trooper, as the case is here, IA reviews it. In the event that something is found inappropriate, training will be done. Attorneys for the state have sought in federal filings to have the case dismissed, claiming the troopers acted in good faith without fraud or malice, as they always say. Uh, the uh, NJ Advanced Media obtained the footage along with the dispatch log through the open records request, and documents showed that Trooper Matthew Stazzoni pulled Musara over at 9.30 p.m., suspected of speeding. We don't even have a criminal violation here, folks. All we have is traffic. It's civil. He was quickly joined by a second trooper. Dashboard camera reveals he approached the vehicle on the side, asked Ms. Musara for her license, registration, proof of insurance. And the statement is being made, uh, the trooper asked, while you're looking for that, do you know why you're being pulled over? She claimed she provided the documents necessary but did not respond to the troopers. And by the way, folks, all you are required to do under Supreme Court doctrine is to provide identifying information such as ID and in the case of traffic, the proof of insurance and your registration. You are not required to answer any other questions, affirmations, or make any statements whatsoever. After asking her several more times, Trooper Stazzoni walked to the other side of the car, tapped on the window with his flashlight, and again demanded a response. He then threatened her, saying, you are going to be placed under arrest if you don't answer my questions. Well, number one, all he asked her was, do you know why you're being stopped? You don't have to answer that. That's that's not obstruction. Obstruction. But why would he ask her if she knows why well, she's being stopped? Because when he stopped her? because the troopers play this word game to try to sell the ticket, to try to get you to okay. say you knew you were doing something wrong, so it makes you more uh, amenable, like you're justifying that they're writing you that. They used to tell us that in the academy. You want to sell that ticket. You want to sell that ticket. Well, the footage shows she eventually told the trooper she was an attorney and did not have to answer any questions. He ordered her out the vehicles. He cuffed her, walked her toward a troop car. She asked, are you detaining me because I refuse to speak? Yes. Obstruction. Put her in the back of the car, Mirandized her, then tells her in Miranda, you have the right to remain silent. Folks, folks, folks. When you know, when you know why people want to accuse cops of being a bunch of donut commandos, it's stuff like this. He asks her questions, and she invokes her Fifth Amendment, and then Mirandizes her and says, "You got the right to remain silent, but I'm hooking your butt up because you won't answer no questions." Oh, darn it! Insane. Well, that's not a going court. Well, she's going to win because the, 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 the video, uh, video says that. And then 
uh, state police did not provide any video from inside the station in, in the records request. She was patted down twice, cuffed to a bench inside a holding cell. They denied her her phone call, promised to call on her behalf, but never did so. Stank claims another trooper, James Butler, later entered the cell to ask her what happened. And she said, uh, well, the trooper arrested me for not answering questions. And the supervisor indicated to me that was obstruction. Now here, here we go. Mm. New Jersey's obstruction statute defines the criminal act as impeding law enforcement through flight, intimidation, force, violence, physical interference or obstacle or by any means, excuse me, by means of any independently unlawful act. This is very close to the Louisiana statute, which I believe is uh, under 14108, which covers everything from obstructing, obstruction to fleeing and eluding. And uh, Musara, the lawyer, said that Butler then left to review the dashboard camera footage and after 30 minutes returned and told her a mistake was made, chalk it up to training, and that Stazzoni, the trooper, was just a rookie. Be reminded, he called two other guys to back him up. Jesus. So, so three New Jersey donut-eating rocket scientists can't figure out what exactly <laughs> is the Fifth Amendment and will Mirandize you, but then arrest you when you try to use your Miranda rights. They then uh, declined to comment, and uh, the lawyer uh, says that, that uh, Butler then offered to get her, her car, which they towed, out of empowerment for a free as a favor and apologize for the incident. I'm going to read this. Well, folks. It is what it is. <laughs> there's morons everywhere. When you look in the Webster's book and you look up the word moron, you will see a picture of a New Jersey state trooper. I, uh, I want to read this. This is from a friend of mine I know very well and a very spirited mom that fights for her kids. Uh, Dominique, it says, she says, I hate cooking dinner pretty much every day. I'm usually running on fumes and dread the kitchen cleanup. I complain in my own head that at least one kid won't even eat what I'm cooking, and I'll go through the nightly battles that ensue. Huh. However, I very clearly felt the Holy Spirit convict me today while cooking with, be thankful you have food to cook. I tell him you eat what's in the pot or you can go lay down. Well, this is good. I wanted to finish up with this. I cried. It's true. Why is it so easy to take the basics like food for granted? I am grateful I can feed my kids tonight. This is what happens when you pray for a joy-filled life and are constantly convicted of your own negative spirit. There is no joy or peace in life when you carry an ungrateful heart. Count your blessings and be filled with joy. We ate today. That yeah. and you know what? Well, Jim, that that says a lot about Michelle Obama has the ungrateful heart. She said until her her idiot uh, goat man husband was elected, I'm finally proud of my country. Yeah. Yes. But you but you know what? I know Dominique and she got too. I got fussed at a crawfish boil. <laughs> Her, her son came over to me, and about three or four years old, and they had these big cookies. I gave them the whole cookie. And? And she goes, you're coming to my house tonight because he's going to be up all night after he eats that sugar. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. But you see, I, I read that for a reason. It, it goes to show how sometimes the simplest things in life right. we become ungrateful for mm -hmm. When, when we should really be praising it because we have the ability to eat or do whatever. You know what I saw on Facebook that was very appropriate? It was a very short snippet, but it says, if you have a roof over your head, food in your belly, and a warm place to sleep, you better be thankful. Exactly. I mean, well, I was watching that guy on out there walk around. That, they, they need to find out about that that guy out there, he's, <laughs> he's walking around talking and... Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. But I mean, the, the whole thing is, and I wanted to read that, because we, we, we sometimes think we got it so bad, 
and you know things are not good in this country there's no doubt about that but you know we just have to pray every day you know from Brock. good night guys great job as always thanks Brock we appreciate you too yep your insight is invaluable but but it's 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 just trying to keep up look tomorrow night y'all got to come out tomorrow night I mean, there's some things coming down the road that I'm work, we're working on to get to, to inform you. Our biggest thing is educating you, not telling you who to vote for, not telling you what to do. I have had an education beyond anything I ever thought in the last seven <laughs> years. And, I, and people around me, and I have fought with them and everything else. God bless. He keeps rotating his hand. We must have time. We have five seconds. What? <laughs> Get your Bibles, beans, and bullets in order, folks. Oh, now we're in We will ten, see what happens. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Oh, thing. gun show coming up in June. Gun, Don't June miss it. June the 11th and 12th.